five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Here I am. Yes, me. I'm Alex Bennett. I'm your host and your entrepreneur of GabNet. We'll be here until midnight tonight with the Citizen Panel, which will start in about 25 minutes from right now. But once every two weeks, we like to check in with uh, ex-wives, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, there in Lake Oswego, Oregon, is the lovely presence of Ronnie Bennett. And uh, Ronnie is not wearing a turban today. No, uh, I'm not. She is in, you, you, what'd you say? You've gone what? Full bore chemo girl. Full, full, <laughs> full bore chemo girl. Do-da, do-da. Uh, yeah, chemo girl. Yeah. It looks good. The hair seems to be growing back from the last time it's you showed. It's growing back. I mean, it's, you know, I was, because it's patchy, it doesn't grow from everywhere. I'd been yeah. shaving it. And what happened is one day a pizza guy was at the door, and I keep a hat by the door so that I put it on and don't scare people to death when, yeah. I, when I answer the door. Yeah. And I completely forgot it, and I opened it up, and I could see him look surprised at me. I mean, people look, look like this, particularly women, and everybody thinks cancer, and they're usually right. So we took care of our transaction with the pizza and the money. And he turned around to go. He was very, very young. He was like 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. And he'd already shown his shock at my baldness. And he turned around and he said, how are you doing? Yep. Isn't that nice? Yes, it's very nice. I hope you gave him a good tip. <laughs> so anyway, um, it's gotten warm here. Yeah. And um, I get tired of hats. In the wintertime, I even wore them to sleep because it was cold at night. Um, but no more. And so I, and again, I, I sort of forgot when I was going to the grocery store. And when I got there, there's a checkout woman there whose hair is cut like this too. Mm -hmm. And so we bumped into each other at, at the oranges or something or the tomatoes. Yeah. And um, I said, look, we've got the same haircut. And so we laughed about that. And, um, and so now, you know, if I felt like wearing a pretty hat, I would wear a pretty hat. But I'm going to see what happens. I don't think it's going to grow good enough to be a real head of hair. But I'm going to let it go for By now and way, see what happens. Let me mention that, that Ronnie is going through chemotherapy, <laughs> not because she has cancer, but because she likes chemotherapy. <laughs> so, you know, when I, I went out to the, pick up the mail yesterday and mm -hmm. some neighbors yelled, oh, I love the hair, and so on. So... You know, people, people, people figure it out. Yeah, people figure it out. Uh, it, it, no, it, you know, actually, it looks pretty good. Actually, we're twins. So. <laughs> actually, you see, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got more hair. See, I should keep you. my ha cap off. Although this is my Chinese cap. Uh, I got China, Chinese army. Uh, uh, but so I, we've got two old bald-headed people. <laughs> two old bald-headed people. Right. Right. And my hair is about as short as yours is. Yours is maybe a little longer, actually. Yes, it is. And I've got these. I've got to fix this. These little tufts over my ear, I don't like, so I yeah. have to clip those. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but but it, 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 so you're still doing the chemo, but the hair is growing back. No, no, no. I'm off chemo oh, for two months. Oh, I see. Okay. I've been off chemo for I guess it's five or six weeks. Maybe there's a couple more to go, um, and. And some hair was growing back, but as I said, it's clumpy. There are places where I'm bald, and there's places where hair grows. So yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to have a reasonable head of hair ever again. Yeah. But and by the way, this is much easier, as you must know. Yeah. Than having hair. Yeah. Oh yeah. Not a lot of work to do, and uh, and everybody just seems to take it in stride. And so why not? And you know, come winter, I'll wear warm hats again if I'm still here. Yeah. Oh, it looks uh, it's very becoming, very becoming of you. Uh -huh. 
So uh, how? Uh, so you're off the chemo. Why did they stop the chemo? Just because too much chemo? Um, because it does a lot of bad things to you and causes a lot of things to you know not work quite as good as it should. And so they first we did a, um, a, a one. I, I have it. It's scheduled every other week. Yeah. So we skipped one, and then when I saw the oncologist, um, he said, "What about?" Because it was affecting some other. Um, organs in here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, let's take uh, four treatments off. So that's two months. Uh, so we're skipping four treatments, or is it eight? Every other week. Well, how will months. that affect your remission? Well, we don't know yet. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, and, and remission isn't a word that anybody uses. There's, that doesn't apply. What's the word they use? Well, it, it's more complicated because it's <clears throat> different things happen to different people. In my case, the chemo has shrunk some of the cancer cells, and others have they can't even see on the CT scan, but they won't say they aren't there. They're just too small to see, is what they. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Uh, so, the, you know, I see him in a week or two, and we'll figure out what to do How next. How long has it been? And, you know, you're yeah. right to bring this up about um, about what's happening in terms of the treatment, because I'm worried. You know, pretty soon, another two or three weeks or so, I have another CT scan. The last one, you know, we celebrated big. It was really a good one. Mm -hmm. um, the cancer was way, way, way low. And, uh, you know, and now not only has a lot more time gone by, but a lot more time without the chemo that slows the growth of cancer. Mm -hmm. So I'm, a, I'm starting to get worried now, and there's nothing to do about it but live with it. You know, you know I, I, you know, I, I um, and, and but my situation is nowhere near as dire as yours. But every <clears throat> six months I go to get a, a blood test to see how my uh, PSA is for my prostate. And uh, I have one coming up, and I always obsess about it, you know. And, and what's it going to be do, like? You would obsess more than yeah, I do, but yeah, that but doesn't mean how, I don't how, worry about it uh, quietly. Oh, 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 okay. All right. That's what I wondered. Because you're going, you, you know, this, is like, this isn't like grades in college, okay? This is far more important uh, to yeah. your well-being. And, you know, there's always a chart that and it, 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 when they've done the test, mm -hmm. a chart that, you know, when I had, before I had the Whipple or anything, had... Um, the the cancer thing on the chart was way up here. Yeah. After the surgery, it went down to zero. Yeah. Then it went across and went up a little bit, and then it went down a little bit with chemo. And I surely don't want to see it going up again. You know. Yeah. Eventually, I guess it will. But uh, you know, I you obsess and I worry. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, and you know, I went. To, I had to go to my regular doctor yesterday just because I've had some. I think it's pollen. He thinks it's pollen uh, <laughs> problems. And uh, he, I told him about the prostate thing. And he said, don't worry about it. He said, at your age, uh, it, the chances of having prostate cancer are quite high. And I said, well, I heard they were 70%. He says, I've heard 80. He said, and by the time you reach 90 years of age, if you live that long, it will be 100% chance that you have prostate cancer. <laughs> you know. And he made me feel much better about it. He said, "Don't even worry about it." Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. We deal with what we have thrown at exactly. us. Exactly. I'm trying to do the best. Well, I you know can. something. You're an inspiration. I, I hate to say this. I don't want you to be a poster child or anything like that. But I'm you're not a poster child for anything. But you here. are. You are an inspiration. I get. I get notes from people here saying, "Gee, she's an inspiration." You know that she's handling this with a certain amount of grace that they say, quite frankly, if it happened to me, I don't know if I could. Oh, well, yeah. you know, you're seeing me for 30 minutes on this video through Skype that when I turn it off, you don't know that I throw myself on the ground and weep. Yeah. I'm yep. making that up, but, you know, metaphorically at least. Well, uh, me, I, I don't know how I would handle it, but you know me. How would I handle it? I would handle you would it. I constantly ask me if I think that it's gotten worse every day, every other five minutes. <laughs> oh boy, when Ron, when Marjorie hears this, she's going to say, "Oh, it's so like he is today." <laughs> Not 
nothing changes. <laughs> nothing changes. You know, only I'll tell you, it, it's gotten worse as I've gotten older. My hypochondria. I don't and, know. And, what. and and what has it ever gotten you? Nothing, except <laughs> a, a lot of agita. You know, I mean, um, uh, I you know, I I just I. I want to be healthy till I'm 100. You know, here's the point. If I live to be 100, I'm not going to be terribly healthy no matter how I want to be. I mean, my mother was healthier than you or I could possibly expect to be, and she had like, uh, what do you call it? Not, not Alzheimer's, but uh, dementia. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm thinking, if I had to live with dementia, I don't know if I'd want to keep on living. You well, know? you wouldn't know. Well, yeah, you don't know. I mean, <laughs> or at uh, least after a certain point, you wouldn't know anymore. Yeah, I mean, and she died. She died, kind of of dementia because she just at one point just quit eating. Many people do when it's time to go; they stop eating. Yeah, she did, she hit a hundred, and I figure she was like the loneliness of the long distance runner. I don't know if you ever saw that movie. Gets right up to the finish line and says, "Ah, to hell with it," you mm -hmm. know. Um, uh, she, I think, hit the finish line and went, okay, I'm out of here because I'm not going to make it to 200. <laughs> God, that's a funny number to hear. And then, I remember <laughs> I was in Macy's. I was in Macy's buying, I don't know, a jacket or something like that. And I get a call. And it's uh, my business manager, Gary. And uh, he says, the doctor wants to talk with you. And I get on the line. He says, listen, your mother is refusing to eat. She's not really eating. We try to feed her. We could feed her with uh, intravenously, keep her alive indefinitely, who knows how long. He says, but really, she, I think she wants to go. And he says, what do you think we should do? And I said, if she doesn't want to eat, she doesn't want to eat. And within a week, I think she was dead. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a horrible decision to make when you're standing in the middle of Macy's buying a jacket. But, you know, it was my feeling was she hit 100, I'm going to feel sorry she's gone, but I'm not going to feel sorry for her. I feel she lived a good life, a long life, you know, mazel tov. Now, I was thinking about Anderson Cooper because his mother. Oh, yesterday his mother died, yeah. Yeah, his mother died. Um, Gloria Vanderbilt, uh, who had her name on everybody's ass in America at one point. Uh, and he, you know, he was kind of crying and sad and so on, and I'm going... She was, I think she was 96. And I went, you can, I don't know what you cry about, because I couldn't cry, you know, because I said I had her longer than most people ever have their parents, you know, and I, I felt that crying would be selfish on my part for all the people well, that- We all deal with, with grief differently. I mean, you can't, you can't say one way is right and another way isn't right. I mean, I, I, I lost, I lost my- I mean, certainly we yeah. miss the people we love whenever they leave and uh and you know as i said we each grieve in our own way it's uh and it's all all of it's okay <laughs> yeah but i mean like you remember when my you remember when my father died yes and um he was 59 that uh, i was oh, very oh, sad yeah. about in fact you told me that i was crying in my sleep that night or something <laughs> like that you know uh, mm -hmm. It was very sad to me. But at 100, with my mother going, I didn't feel the same thing. Of course, I didn't like my mother as much as I like my father, but, you know, <laughs> she gets that joke. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Your mother had, oh, this is good. Let me, let me, this little story. I remember once we were at your house, this is, I think before we were married, but yeah. hanging out. Yeah. And we needed to drive to the East Bay from Marin County for some damn cousin's bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. And it was a long drive, and we knew we had to leave by about 11 to get there at the right time. And so, you know, you and I and your dad are off somewhere in the house getting dressed and ready to go. And we come upstairs, and your mother is still in her robe. It's going on 11 o'clock, and she's taking all the dishes out of the cupboards to clean the cupboards. And your dad, I can't do his accent right, but his Ruth, Ruth, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and she had no sense of time. Just drove everybody nuts. And listen, let me ask you a question. You said my father's accent. Uh huh. Do you know I never heard an accent in my father? I, I well, you never heard his. You know, you, 
I mean, that's all you ever heard. To that me, that's he, how your father sounded to, from the to time me, you were born. Yeah, but to me, he didn't have an accent. And you say he had an accent. How thick was it? Moderately. Not big deal. Not yeah. difficult. Not, no difficulty understanding him. Oh, right. He couldn't... The thing about your mother's name, Ruth, is that he didn't say a TH sound the way American English does. It was more German. Oh, Okay. Um, See, and that I, was the biggest one I remember. I, I never heard that. I never heard an accent with my father. Never perceived of him as having an accent. You know? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 and of course my mother didn't have one because she, she had, if she had one, it was from the Bronx. You know? Oh, I thought she grew up in the Lower East Side. No, she grew up in the Bronx. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, I mean... Uh, the thing is about uh, Alzheimer's, for instance. When you die, do you know you've died? You know, is or is your passing just something that? Yeah, maybe maybe Alzheimer's for the person who has it, in many ways, is a blessing. If they're going to go, you know what I'm saying. In other words, you're not. Wait, wait, wait. You're, you're asking if somebody knows when they uh, die. Are they as aware of their mortality once they get Alzheimer's? Oh, I. Who would know? They can't answer the questions. <laughs> well, I mean, but I, I, well, the reason I'm asking you is because you kind of study old age and, and you've I maybe run into some statistics about it, you know? I don't know anything about I don't think anybody knows. Nobody's come back and told us what dying is like yet, you know? I mean, there are the near-death experiences where some funny-looking alien takes you up and I don't know what they do with you in their spaceship. Um, you know, you can believe that or not. It's well, they they, an, they supposedly <laughs> anal probe you. I don't know what aliens have with people's asses, but they always anal probe them. Um, but, you know, I, I wouldn't take that as scientific fact. Yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's the, it's the great mystery of life. Is it, is it the end of everything for an individual consciousness? Or does some part of us go on somewhere? None of us know. We'll have to wait and see. I suppose I should not be a fearful of death, but look at it as a great adventure. It is. It's a great adventure. I've always thought that, but more so since the psilocybin. Yeah. That I'm, I'm more sanguine about it. And she took. Let's just let people know. Haven't heard this. You took psilocybin, which is a. Um, what's the? Uh, what's, it's a psychedelic. It's a psychedelic. Uh, and it, um, it, it, you, you took it, and it made you come to terms with death better, right? Is that yep. is that how you would describe it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, there were other things involved, but but that was the important one that I was most interested in facing. Yeah. Um, because it was, I was after I was diagnosed, I was just terrified all the time. Yeah. And I'm not anymore. Um, one of the things that's changed since that session, which was last December, is although I've meditated off and on all my life, I've never really taken it seriously. And this time, I spend quiet time where I sit quietly. I wouldn't call it meditation because I'm just not disciplined enough to do that kind of thing. But I sit quietly and let thoughts go through my head and watch them go through and think about them. And maybe I, I, you know, I only spend 10 or 15 minutes at it a day, but it obviously, and what comes up a lot, um, is my impending death and, uh, and it's not scary anymore. It's, I, it, it, it seems like the other side of the coin, that one side of a coin is living and the other side is being dead. And I don't know what the second side is about or like, or if I will e even ever know. I mean, it's, it's, it's as likely to me that our consciousness ends with death as it is that it might go on. And I have no way of knowing till I get there. And it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, as I say, I've always had that great fear of death. As I, We were talking about my father, and one time I said to him, Dad, I said, I have a great fear of death. And he said, well, you, you, know, you shouldn't fear it because you've been there before. Your dad said that? Yeah. He says, you've been... What a nice he, answer. I, I, I said, I can't understand what it's like to not know that I exist. And he says, you've been there before. 
you, you know, and you, and you certainly, you know, don't fear that. And so for the rest of my life, I feared about what it was like before I was born. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, it was a very wise thing he said. You're really basically going back to whatever stuff you were originally, you know, right. before you existed. I've recently come to think, and this doesn't mean I think that it's necessarily real, but entertaining the idea, <clears throat> since I don't really, ha I don't have a religion really, but entertaining the idea that there is something afterwards and that there is some, some place, some little corner of the universe where I belong and I will be. I mean, I, I don't know that that's true. It's just fun to think about. <laughs> what was that Albert Brooks movie, Something for Your Life, um, in which you, you, you go to uh, the halfway place between heaven and hell and they judge where you should go, whether you should go to heaven or whether you should go to hell. And going to hell was based on the fact, how much fear did you have in life? How much fear? How much fear, yeah. And so uh, 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 he, he, he has a problem because he's, he's just a very fearful person like I am, you know. Uh, and it, it was, um, it made me think about that, you know, that maybe our life should be measured by how much joy we give ourselves and not how much pain we give ourselves. And I give myself a lot of pain and I feel bad about that. I feel well, I, I don't, I haven't lived my life to its fullest, you know. Well, I'm, you could start now. Well, I could start now, but <laughs> and then I get really depressed and go, it's too late, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's not too late. Ever. I mean, I have to be, I have to live with the knowledge. You know, I, you're living with the knowledge that you have something that's maybe going to kill you, or maybe it will probably kill you, but we don't know when. Okay. Right. I live with the fact that right now my health seems to be okay. All right. But that I could probably drop dead tomorrow. I heard before that you. knock on your desk. Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, 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 I could, I could, you know, die tomorrow get a heart attack or whatever and be gone before you. So there's no... I want to tell you something about that yeah. statement. Yeah. A lot of people have said that to me. It's just as much... I could just die tomorrow long before you. Nobody's given you a death sentence. No, you're absolutely thing. right. You look, look at it differently. Hey, I'm not going to argue with you on that one. Okay? But nevertheless, uh, you know, we don't know when we're going to go. I mean, I, I hear about people I know who, who, are, who are dead now. You know, every week I get news of somebody I knew who died. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. John. You know, if you live long enough, that just keeps happening. Dr. John, <laughs> who we knew years ago, dead, you know. And, and I go, you know, maybe this is just, maybe, maybe this is a sign <laughs> that, hey, you're lucky because all these other people are dying, but you're still here. So why don't you rejoice in the fact that you're still here? I think you're handling How do you know you're still here? Maybe this is the other side. Oh, God, now you've given me something else to worry about. <laughs> God damn you. Yeah, yeah. What if I don't exist? Maybe if, what if, what if I'm somebody else's imagination? Yes. You know? Yes, you're, 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 you're one of the... What do, what do they call them? Extras in somebody well, else's dream. Let me dream. ask you this. Well, let me ask you this. When you look back on your whole life, didn't it seem to go by awfully fast? Yes. As a matter of fact, I'm writing about that for tomorrow. And yet, and yet it went by very slowly. Very what? Very, it went by very slowly. But when you look back on it, it went by really fast. Not when you were a little kid. That's the difference between old people and little kids. Yeah. Little kids, if their birthday is next week, it might as well be 10 years from now. Oh, they can't if, stand if waiting. You, if you ask a little kid how old they are, they will tell you up to... Excuse me, folks, but we have to kind of end it there, I guess. Uh, if you want to... Oh, boy. I screwed up. Let me just do this. I screwed up. You see, what happened was I was trying to do something here, and I, I pushed something to get something going, and I hit what's, uh, what is the, uh, um, this button here, one of these buttons here. What, what would I have done? But anyway, what it did is it, it turned the interview off. And if I start the interview again,
See, if I, it, it won't pick up where it left off. It'll just... Ladies and gentlemen, there in Lake Oswego. And we're not going to go to the very beginning on that. It was almost the very end of the interview. If you want to see the end of the interview, uh, uh, excuse my screw up, okay? But you can go over to YouTube and uh, let me see here. Where is it on YouTube exactly? Hold on a second. You go to uh, YouTube uh, and... Uh, uh, our videos, and there is a video of her, of the interview I did with her. Uh, and oh, you can also go. By the way, yes, you can go to her. Um, you can go to her website, which is uh, timegoesby.net, and she has posted the interview from there. So you can watch the very end of it if you want to. It only had about a minute left to go. Yeah, it, just about a minute. So uh, I'm sorry about that. I, uh, you know, this is just one of the many fuck-ups that happen when I'm doing this show. And I should learn that I should never try to do anything with this computer while that's playing because it reacts to uh, certain keystrokes. And the keystroke that changes it, you know, from one thing to another is that. Or it could be something as simple as this, Okay. Uh, uh, I don't think it was something like that. No, no, no. Yeah, but uh, anyway, that that's the way it goes. Okay, I'm sorry about it. Uh, and I'm, but I'm sure, I'm sure you enjoyed it. And um, uh, we'll uh, we'll hope that you're not mad at me uh, for doing that. Anyway, listen, let me, uh, let me uh, get my uh, Skype line open here. You know, this is another feel-free night in case you're, you're interested. Uh, and uh, he likes to make a big deal out of that, so I figure, well, why shouldn't I add it, okay? Um, let's see here. That's some of the other stuff that was going on there. Here we go. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, our uh, Skype lines are now open. Okay. Uh, and again, I'm sorry for that. I really didn't want to screw things up like that, and I did. And uh, I just have to learn to never use this computer while this is playing. Either that or I can do something here to make the video uh, go right back to the video. And I probably should do that. And that's a matter of, of clicking on something here and making it go in a certain way so that if, it, if I do that, it simply keeps playing, and I can just pick it right up where I left off when I see that happen. But I don't do that because I don't figure that's going to happen much, and it does. All right? So I'm sorry, and uh, I apologize to Ronnie. There we go. Here comes, uh, oh, what do you know? From Dubai, ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, it's Bree. Uh, Hi, Alex. Am I the first one in? Yeah, but I need your uh, I need you to give me some picture here. Uh, it'll just be a minute. It'll be a minute. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I just wanted to be the first one in for a change. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. We'd like to see you though, because all we get, you see, when we don't when we don't have a picture on somebody, what we get is that plug for Skype and fuck them. I don't like to plug Skype if I don't have to. You know. Oh, but, the, you know, they make the show possible. Well, and impossible. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's if it isn't one thing, it's another. But anyway. Yeah, I, I think they're good. Yeah, yeah. But um, anyway, well, let me see here. I, I'm, oh, I see what that is. Hold on a second. My, um, uh, uh, oh, that's just, that's my video from... Uh, the other camera here. Yeah, there it is. All right, I have to get things straightened here. I, everything was going so perfect tonight, by the way. I got the show on. I got Ronnie on. It was all smooth going. There we go. There we go. And there this, is your window. Yes. <laughs> Why? You I'm don't just about ready. Really? I oh, can... oh, okay. He's, there you are. There's a little bit of you there. And if yeah. you move your camera... A little bit over, Alex. Uh, you, you're, you, you and your camera. I never watch the show. I only listen to the podcast. So, yeah. Well, you have to know that you know. Basically, we have more viewers that watch this on video than listen to it on audio. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you 
so you get the numbers, for example, I download from Podcast Addict. You see those numbers? I, I, I should be able to see a number if somebody is watching, I, I can tell, you know. But listening. Yeah. But how do you get the listening numbers? Well, I have different places I go, and it's, it's not all completely accurate. And uh, I wouldn't. Yeah. Well, I don't even want to tell you how low it really is. <laughs> oh, well, I I think that when you post two YouTube videos, mm -hmm. that that artificially deflates your numbers. You know. What do you mean it artificially deflates my numbers? Well, I mean, you one it's basically the same video, mm -hmm. but one will have fifty, and another will have twenty views. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. I have to put some more people up here. Hold on a second. Uh, we have uh, Jeff, and uh, then we have uh, go over to uh, Charlie. We get Charlie here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Where's Charlie? Where's Charlie? Charlie? Uh, we don't. Uh, I'm here. here. No, okay. There oh, we go. Okay. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. This, I can't. You, I can. Your name doesn't come up until. Oh, hold on a second. Your name doesn't come up until I. Uh, uh, until I, yeah, oh, there, there we go. There's Charlie Wallace. You, you're in the same place you were in last night. So, and now I, and have, to, all I have to, hey, Brian Ludwig is calling here. Let's, let's see if he comes on. Does he come on? There we go. Let me go to my next page here and put him in the number four slot. Uh, let's see here. Hello. I guess he's this one, I would imagine. Uh, hello, Brian. Are you there? there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. All right, there we go. Yep. Okay, there's what is 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 that it? Oh, is that your hair? Yes. No. Is it really? Correct. What did you do? Did you become a blonde? Still is that losing what? Weight. Wow. Is, yeah. <laughs> did you become a blonde? Yeah, uh, I uh, I had I had it highlighted. That. Wait a minute. What color was your hair before? A darker shade of this same color. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So now you're a blonde. Do blondes have a more lighter fun? shade? Yes. Yeah, do, do blondes have more fun? Oh, well, yeah, I guess I, I did, but uh, I'm looking for a new line of work and uh, uh, I uh, am about to receive a new line of work in a week. So within a week or two. So. What do you mean? You're receiving a new line of work? What, uh, what new line of work is that? Uh, uh, might I ask? Uh, uh, cleaning, uh, going around and uh, uh, cleaning uh, bathrooms and whatnot. Really? Oh, okay. Uh, cleaning bathrooms? Porta uh, Johns and whatnot. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's, it's something. There we go. There's Al Kroger. Uh, Al is there? Al K. Kroger, right? Yes. Sir. Yep. Okay. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Well, we, we're filling I up. I miss Phil. Huh? You, you miss Phil? <laughs> I miss Phil. <laughs> why, why, you miss beating up on him? Yeah, well, it's kind of fun, you know. Yeah. Has he been absent? Well, you know, it's great because we have two people here that we don't haven't had on in a while. One is uh, is Bree, and, and the other is uh, 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 our, our good friend Brian. Uh, and uh, so it's it's nice to catch up with them. So you're you have you been working at all, Brian? Uh, up until about a week and a half ago, yes. No, oh, what happened? Uh, contract expired. It was a. Uh, it, it was an independent contract. Oh, job. I see. Uh, a demonstrative hours. Uh, what what hours? You, uh, what what demonstrative what? hours? It, as you can. This define demonstrative hours. Uh, uh, every night from uh, six days a week from uh, uh, 115, 130 until yeah, uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Wow, and that's the reason we haven't heard from you, I guess, is because you probably had to sleep or something, right? In which part, yes. Hmm. Wow. How about you, Bree? What's the, what's the new with you? What's new in the wonderful land of Dubai? Um, I'm moving. <laughs> You're Ooh. moving? Oh. Yeah. Where are, you, where are you moving to? Uh, Malaysia. 
Mm. Malaysia. Okay, what do you, now? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. You, you really move around. Yeah. Right. Why not? Life is short. It's a big, uh, big blue dot. Mm -hmm. And so why stay in one section of it for any length of period of time? Now you're you're teaching in Dubai, so I assume you're going to teach in uh, in. Uh, then oh. you assume incorrectly. Really? What you are you should gonna... never assume. What are you going you to assume? You make an ass, ass out of you and me. Yeah, but what are, what are you uh, what are you going to do in Malaysia? Uh, more um, administrative work, I guess you could say. Oh, okay. And and will you be able to call us from Malaysia? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And the timing will be different though. Um, uh, so I will. It will be 10 a.m. to 12 noon. So that's a more reasonable hour for me. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. I, I don't know why. I happen to be up early this morning. I got up at four thirty this morning. Yeah. And, well, you'll be uh, the same. You'll be the same time zone as China. Uh, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, China's twelve hours off of us. And by the way, all of China. I don't know if people know this. All of China is the same time zone. Now it shouldn't be, ah, but it is because they they made the entire country the same time zone because they didn't want people to be fucked around with. So and North yeah. Korea and Thailand messed theirs up like they, they there's some like fractional difference, difference. you know it's not it, like an it, hourly difference. Isn't there a place here in the United States where uh, where there's a a half hour difference in one area? I don't know, I, I don't know I don't where, know. but there is like one place I, where there is a half hour difference. I don't know about that, but I do know that Guam is the first <clears throat> part of the U.S. that welcomes the new day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so yeah. Guam is the, the U.S. territory. I've been there. Yeah. Uh, my dad served there during the Korean conflict, and my mm -hmm. brother was there for a little while as a Marine. Well, just before yeah, so. you got there, did you say, here today, Guam tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have a funny way of uh, saying hello. They say half a day. <clears throat> how, how, what? Half a day. Half a day. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, 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 Je Jeff, you had your hand up, did you? Yeah. yeah, I think in Michigan, there's two different time zones. Well, there may be two different time zones because of the place in which the time zone goes but i think there was there's somewhere in the united states where there's a half hour difference might be maine i i really can't remember i'm trying to remember where where it was if if in fact i'm even remembering correctly i think you're right because i remember john's. what st john's st john's yeah where's that Near Nova Scotia or whatever, but yeah. Really? Wait, hmm. It's not that. Yeah. How do I that? All right. Yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. He's trying. He's trying to show us a map here. Uh, uh, so these are half hour, forty five minute time zones. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. St. John's. Okay. I remember something like that from geography, sixty years ago or something. Whatever the heck. <laughs> Yeah. Well, apparently he didn't remember it today. <laughs> you know, I was, but I, uh, 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 who knows? Who knows? But uh, China has the whole, uh, the whole country is the same time zone. And, and they would be like four different time zones if they actually yeah, like, had the time zone. It's like, it's as wide as the U.S., isn't it? I think it's as wide as the U.S., yeah. yeah. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, but um, um, anyway, so. Well, Bree, that's that's good. Bree's going to uh, to Malaysia. We get to see. We we're I'm, we're getting to travel the world with Bree, <laughs> which is wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Uh, good luck, huh? Yeah, good luck. I said good luck to Bree. Well, we yeah. don't have to say good luck because he'll he'll get a hold of us when he gets there. And when are you when are you going to this new job? Uh, I will go. Uh... Like two or three weeks. Really? 
So you have I to see. pack up your entire life in, in Dubai and move it to Malaysia. Yeah. Well, you, but you've done this before, so. Done yeah. it before, and each time I'm able to reduce more stuff. So yeah. I've been getting pretty good. Good for you. And, and you're married, right? And so your wife is going with you. How does she feel about going to Malaysia? Great. Great. Really? So, yeah. Okay, well, congratulations on Malaysia. That's, that's good for all of us because you'll probably start showing us a lot of Malaysia. <laughs> what's, well, Southeast Asia, actually. What the, I do what, a lot more traveling when I'm there. What's, oh, what, yeah, what city is it that you're going to be in? Um, Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur, okay. Yeah. All right. I'll be in a suburb of there. Yeah. Um, you're, uh, uh, yeah, okay. A suburb of Kuala Lumpur. Do they have tract homes there? I don't know. I, don't know. I you know, my thinking would be they have tract huts, but, you know, what do I know about Malaysia? So. Anyway, so, hello, Al. How are you tonight? I'm very good. I'm sorry that Phil isn't here. I did want to pick on him a little bit. What would you want? What, it, okay, pretend I'm Phil. All right. Pretend I'm Phil. Go ahead, pick on me. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't have anything bad to say. I enjoyed uh, the Ronnie interview. That was great. Yeah. No. Uh, tell her I say she's an inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. she is an inspiration. I think it's amazing, actually. You know? I mean, uh, she's got a lot of dignity going for her. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's man. Definitely. Yeah. Now, you're in your car, aren't you? I am indeed. And you find by going, it, it, it's better than sitting in your house and talking to us, right? Well, yeah, I, I don't have to bother anybody. and Everybody's in bed. I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah. Maybe I go out to the car. Yeah. It's still right. I don't mind. It's a very comfortable car. It's a Dodge, the big old Dodge. And I'm like, I figured out how to drive 2,700 miles in it one trip. So I'm like, okay, I guess I'm comfortable in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I car. haven't. I have not owned a car. Man. I have not owned a car in wow uh, since since two thousand four. So that's like uh, about fifteen hey, years, and, and which that's amazing for me because as a kid, you know, I grew up in California with uh, my car. And and as a California kid, you, you lived with your car. You know, you they may you in California. You're born with ca a car attached to your feet. I mean, that's basically what it's all about in California. And then all of a sudden, I come to New York, and this is the second first time around. I had a car here, and the second time around, I said, "What do I need a car for?" You know, uh, New York City has the best urban transportation system in the United States. And I can get anywhere fast with a subway. You know, even faster than taking a cab. So, you know. Yes, yes, mm. yes. Yeah. Well, it's never the suburb, so we drive all the time. It's sort of like California. Drive, yeah. drive, drive. Dri yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, I, but I haven't, I haven't driven in 15 years. And I, and I haven't driven a car in about four or three or four. And I'm wondering if I still remember how to drive a car. You know, I know that sounds silly, but I have that great fear. I'm sorry. You know. I think you will be able to drive it, Alex. Uh, I'm the same as you, mm -hmm. and, and I just I don't like cars. I got a Johnny Watch. You don't like uh, what? You don't like what? I don't like cars. I don't like car culture. I don't like cars. Uh, it, they pollute, and you know, mostly what I have found is. It's, People use cars because they lack the ability to plan their life. And they want to do things sort of instantaneously. And they, they believe that they have freedom. But actually, I, I see the car and the house is more like a ball and a chain. You know, so it's just my view of it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that I, that I take that position because, again, having grown up in California... You had a car, and for instance, I would use it to go to the drugstore. Do you know how far the drugstore was from me? Three blocks. 
But I would get in the car and go to the drugstore. They had a parking lot, right? Um, that's how lazy you become with a car. So, you know. I've heard that thing about the, the car also that I don't like is that police have author essentially can run authority over you. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and they can make up any excuse at all. Mm -hmm. It's basically like you're just fair game. And also, there's all kinds of ways that you can. I had a friend uh, who posted on Facebook. She, you know, lightly had bumped a, a car and there was no damage, but there was little paint chips or whatever. Right. And so she had to go through this whole thing of stressing out about it, having the insurance. It was really nothing. I mean, I saw the pictures. And it's just the kind of thing that just sucks the life out of you. You know what so my you know my you, cars, you know what my father used to do when he bought a new car? He would immediately go down with a hammer and put a dent in it. <laughs> and then he said, I do that because I don't want to worry about getting the first dent. So he did that. He put a he put a ding in the car just to say, Okay, it's broken in now. Because I remember how apoplectic. Tell me this, Charlie. How apoplectic, okay, did you, have you gotten when your car got its first dent? No, I, uh, it huh? bothered me, but I never really got. I don't get all that bent out of shape because it's going to happen. I mean, you could just go to the grocery store and come out and there's a dent in it. You know, bent out of shape is not the right term for this thing. <laughs> but I always used to go crazy when I got the first dent and I said I remember my father I said he had the right idea you just you know you put a, a dent in it and uh, you don't have to worry about the first dent and something you're not going to report to the insurance company because they're going to laugh you out of the out of the insurance company place Right? Yeah, your deductible wouldn't even cover it. Your deductible won't cut you. Yeah, you would, and so how did you, how did you, how, yeah, how did you get this dent? Well, I took a hammer and I put it there. You know. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry. We don't. Well, you're not covered for that. You're not covered for being insane. Um, how about you, Brian? Hmm. Do, do you go crazy when you get a new car and then you get the first dent? Or have you been in a financial a position car. to have a new car? There's that, <laughs> but there's also my, uh, for different reasons, mm -hmm. underlying reasons, mm -hmm. but I'm in complete agreement with Bree. I despise car culture. I despise, uh, and he's, he's absolutely right, the, 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 the cops who are the biggest gangs on the block can... Uh, uh, can run roughshod over you, especially if you're, you're a commercial driver, even more so. And uh, there was an interesting post I uh, posted on Facebook um, that read, uh, we are targeting vehicles, and it says below that, for any excuse to raise revenue. R really? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Somebody photoshopped that in, and uh, it's spot on. It's uh, a few, uh, like a month and a half ago. A month and a half ago, I uh, ran into... Uh, I didn't get pulled over, thankfully, but there was what's called an aggressive driving enforcement area. And the cynical part of my brain got activated big time because there were quite a few people who were pulled over and pulled aside thinking, OK, yet another excuse for them to fatten their wallets and their fucking pig uh, pockets. So, yeah, yeah, I have no use for cars. So, uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's good. You know, I mean, I, well, I, I don't see, and I don't see, I don't see, necessarily see uh, an automobile, especially a house. I don't see a house as a, as a ball and chain. Well, a house isn't a ball and chain. That's kind of where you nest, yeah. you know, and there's nothing yeah, wrong with nesting. We, we all, we all have a nesting desire. Listen, if I never had to leave the house, I never would. Okay. <laughs> but I got to go every now and then to go get, you know. Some milk, but Alex, you know. Yeah. The thing is, is for you is that you rent. Yeah. You know, so technically, I mean, you have laws there that you know will, in theory, keep you there. But there's a possibility that something could happen, uh, and and you wouldn't live there. 
you know, so mm-hmm. I it, could understand it could happen at any moment. house it, builds equity and they own it and they own the land. Maybe, maybe. But, you know, for me right now, I, I just I don't see that because look at all the stuff around you I, and how much of it do you really need and how much of it could you move if you had to? And what are you going to do with the stuff? Lay, you know, I, I, know, I hate I hate to tell you. OK, it, it is a disgusting horrible thing uh the amount of stuff that i have okay i mean just in this room alone the studio okay um it, you know i remember when i first moved from one place to another when i was younger i moved from um i think I'm, i i i lived for a while in sacramento california and i moved to houston texas and Everything I owned was in the back seat in the trunk of that car. Everything I owned. That's a radio line. Yeah. I'm sorry. That doesn't happen. There isn't a, I would have to have a giant van from Beacons in order to move everything that I have, including the stuff that, you know, my wife put all her stuff in a, um, in a storage unit. And then when we moved in here, I think in the back of her mind, she was saying, it's big enough to unload my storage unit. Okay, so all of a sudden, the tables came in, and this came in, and that came in, and all of a sudden, I'm going, what, this is like, she says, oh, it's all from the storage unit. <laughs> you know. Now, where do I put my stuff? You can put it over there in the corner. That'd be fine, Alex, you know. <laughs> I know she's going to yell at me because she says, well, that studio is all yours. Yeah, I guess at this point, right, you know. Right. But, uh, uh, you know, it really, uh, the, all the stuff, What I'm tr- the point I'm trying to make is all the stuff that we have in this place, uh, to suddenly pick up and move it somewhere else would be almost next to impossible, you know. But as Marjorie said, they're going to have to, they're going to have to take me out of here dead, you know. She said, I, you know. By the way, we're coming, uh, we're coming down the home stretch on this whole legal thing with this place. So, philosophically, though, let me add yeah. this. Philosophically, uh, again, uh, I'm pretty much 100% in line with uh, Bree and what comments you've made in the past, Alex. Uh, there is no such thing as ownership. It's a delusion. We, uh, uh, ownership of what, though? We wall ourselves into believing. Well, I mean, we uh, most of us. Uh, I, I, you know, I can say most of us never own a car uh, because we're p- making payments on it, and as long or as we're house. making payments on it, it belongs to the bank. And I remember what happened when I made the last payment. I went out and bought a new car, and yeah, then I had yeah, another three or four years. Of- bank. Don't don't pay to have it. Uh, don't don't pay your registration fee, or if you live in certain areas like I do, mm-hmm. don't pay to have it uh, emissions inspected or state inspected. We watch what happens. That, you won't be in position of that car much longer. Yeah. Just like a house. Yeah. You know, the, the bank owns it for the first thirty years, and then uh, if you don't pay your property tax, guess what? The government does. Yeah. So you never own your home. That's the other thing. Always getting your oil changed. Got to go get it inspected. Then you get a flat tire. I mean, I, I just don't understand. Well, the reason, why. the but reason hey, I... Ray, if you lived in, like, areas like Montana or is a... Uh, yeah. Uh, or Texas. Or Texas. <laughs> or California. You don't ain't going to be bicycling. You ain't going to be bicycling. Go anywhere. Anywhere. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to live happen. there. There's no reason to live there. What'd you say, Charlie? I said, you can't go anywhere if you don't have a car. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah there may Texas. not be any reason to live there, but, Bray, if you Uber, were born there... Lift. Well, you have to understand that in New York, the reason I don't have a car is I live in New York. And in New York, if I had a car to begin with, I would have to buy the car and make the payments monthly on it, okay? Then I would have the insurance, which would be absolutely horrendous in Manhattan. Ah, insurance. All right? The the insurance. And then, of course, then I have to find a garage to park it in, which most garages in my area are about $700 a month. So when you're finished with all of that, then you have to put gas in it, all right? Yes. My question is, how much money a month would I spend on a car? And where I live, how often would I use it? So there's no sense in me having a car. If I really need a car, if I need to go somewhere, I'll simply rent one. 
And that's, you know, and that's no major whoop, you know, so. Yep. Uh, yeah. That's the funny thing about renting a car. Uh, you have to have the same driver's license as to match your with your credit card in terms of the country. Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, my current driver's license is Dubai driver's license. Mm -hmm. And uh, my credit card is Dubai. But in a few weeks, my yep. credit card will be Malaysian, but my driver's license will be Dubai, UAE. So I have to have those match or I can't run a car. Really? That, I, did, I didn't know funny. I didn't know that was the case that you had to they, those things had to match in order yeah, to rent a car. You had to match the country. But what's funny is uh, I have my Dubai license and I had a uh, I had a like a I don't know what you call it. A, it's not a fender bender, but a uh, I call it a non event, but it, it was made into an event by the police. That was another issue. <clears throat> but uh, they didn't know how to handle my Dubai license. They they had never seen it, and they didn't they didn't know what to do with it really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Anyway, so uh, I, I the reason as I say I don't have a car is why, you know, and I think you'll probably I think uh, Jeff, Jeff will agree with me, because Jeff knows the area. There's no sense in me having a car in Manhattan, is there? No, my son has a he lives in New York and he, he has not and, and and when you come to New York yourself, I'm sure you park the car, and then if you have to, you'll take subways and everything else to get around, rather than just well, drive around and hope you can find a parking place. Well, last time we went into the city, we just took the, the uh, train, and then the subway, and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And cars are just... <laughs> can be a, a zoo, you know? Yeah, I mean, if I, moved, if I moved to, say, where you live, Connecticut, I would immediately buy a car. Be yeah. Because, I, you know, that's how you get around. Uh, yes, yes. I, I can tell you, though, I will change my mind once driverless cars become a reality. I, I feel we should just do it tomorrow. And basically, we have, um, you know, diff we can have different models or whatnot, but they'll all be owned by Uber and Lyft, Google, whoever wants to own them. And basically, you just have an app. You hit the app, and the, the closest car comes. The door pops open. You get in. It takes you where you want to go. I, I don't know why we're not doing it. It's so – it would be so convenient. Well, because to begin happened. with, it would be fucking Uber, okay? And we all hate Uber. That's for, that's <laughs> for starters, okay? Uh, and you know something? I have a funny feeling that if I ordered an Uber and they sent over a self-driving car to pick me up, the minute I got in, it would mug me. So you know, I you know, I don't trust Uber. All right. Well, you mentioned that, Alex, about the mugging part. That's just it. The uh, the, the the pig patrol people wouldn't like that because they wouldn't have an excuse to mug you, the driver. That's right. That's right. So you know, but I I I'm probably the only one Robert in this. I'm match. probably the only one in this crowd that doesn't own a car and does. Well, Bree, you don't own a car, right? No way. No way. Uh, but I don't own a car. But everybody else here owns a car, right? And everybody yeah. here drives. Alex well, I mean, we know Alex that you, Al, are a driver because you're in your fucking car right now. <laughs> you know. Yeah. As you recall, I used to do that quite a bit. Call from the car. You, yeah, you you would call from actually you'd call from like the trucks or whatever that you were driving. Mm -hmm. um, but also um, with human organs in the back seat. <laughs> Correct. Which was a rather macabre thing. I didn't know if those human organs were harvested by you or by the people you were driving for. And I, was I strongly suspect about fifty or sixty more pounds than I normally would. I, I strongly suspect that it was you that was harvesting the organs. You know. Anyway, so, ah, uh, so anyway, ah, uh, where was oh, I? Oh, I was, I remember what I was going to oh. say. Uh, my next car, I'm going to make sure that the car works for me. I don't work for it. And by that, I mean like a cargo van or something. That'll be my next investment so that I can do contract work on the side. Yeah, yeah. I have to use a vehicle for personal uh, transportation. I ought to be able to use it to make money off of, too. Right. And not just carting people around via Uber. Right. Well, before I, I before, I before I drop before I drop dead, which could be any day now, the way I've been feeling, 
I, uh, I, 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 I would like to win the uh, lottery, and then I would just buy myself a fuck you car, you know. Uh, I buy, buy like Alex, a, if I win the lottery, Albert's going to be coming back to your producer. We're going to buy the apartment next to yours, make it into a real studio. Really? You, yeah, you, well, you don't buy apartments. Do. You don't buy apartments where I live. You you uh, you rent them. You know. Okay. Well, the, we'll rent it. Uh, you know. Um, we'll be like Jeff Bezos. We'll rent. Yeah. We're you know, we're getting very road. close to uh, ending the uh, the uh, the problem of uh, living here. As you know, we're squatters, you know, and uh, this thing has been tr trying to resolve itself for six years now. Six years it's been going on, and we did nothing wrong. And uh, finally. Uh, uh, went to before a judge the other day. I, we weren't there, but the judge said that uh, we were uh, truly victims. Uh, so that's, that augurs well for how this is going to come out for us. Uh, yeah. You know that we were the in, the innocent parties. I think was the term he used. So uh, we'll see what happens. You know, but it, 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 it it's wonderful that you know that uh, it, it's slowly coming to an end. I know a lot of people are saying, well, then you're going to have to pay rent, but we're being told that the rent is not going to be rather extraordinary. In fact, it makes me gulp when I think about how cheap it will be. Um, so uh, we'll see what happens, you know. Either that or we'll wind up out on the street, one or the other. You know, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but it only, it only cost us almost $60,000 in lawyer's fees so when I say that we haven't been paying rent, yes, we have, you know. But you're supposed to be getting that money back, though. Uh, you, what money the back? Case. The The what? The The lawyer's fees? Yeah, um, are you? I don't know. If you win? I don't know. I don't know. Really don't know. Uh, uh, we, we'll find out, you know. I mean, it, it still hasn't been, it hasn't been settled, but... Uh, <laughs> It looks like we're go we're going to come out okay in all of this. We may not come out with a lot of money out of it, but we will come out with an apartment at a very reasonable rate. And uh, the past uh, uh, rent we would have owed will be somehow taken care of in the settlement and all of that. So uh, hopefully we'll be all right, you know. But uh, it'll be – I don't – you know, I kind of just wanted it to be over for the, for the simple reason – that uh, there's a f sense of impermanency about not renting this apartment, you know? And I'd like to just feel I can put my feet up on the de table and say, okay, this is ours, you know? Nobody can throw Look us out here. Huh? Look on the morbidly bright side, Alex. If you die tomorrow, you won't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, well, if I die tomorrow, and that could be, you know? I've been, I still can't figure out what's wrong with me, but I, the, my doctor checked my heart and everything and said I'm fine. You know, you, you know echocardiograms, right, Jeff? Have you ever had an echo? What's that, sir? Have you had an echocardiogram? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that pretty much tells you tells people what your heart's doing and not doing, right? Sure. And my doctor did it the other day, and said your heart is, you know, uh, uh, the old joke, sound as a dollar. You mean it's going to deflate tomorrow? Uh, no, but it, it um, um, he, you know, he said that was fine, and he said it's probably probably pollen, you know. But, you know, my, my breathing's a little heavy, and I feel agita here, and, yeah. Oh, I'll be dead. Don't worry about me. I, I won't complain. Um, but I, uh, so I, I'm, at least I'm feeling. Do I sound coherent? Am I Okay. Some, some somewhat coherent. So anyway, uh, let's see here. What is happening in the news? Yes, we're going to war. You know something? I what I don't believe, and and I hate to talk about Trump, but definitely, if he weren't here to talk about, what would we talk about? Probably things that really affected us. But anyway. Oh, first. Oh, but you know what? There would be things that affect us, but chances are mm -hmm. uh, they would, A, they possibly wouldn't be deep enough, and B, 
um, uh, most people would be blithely ignorant of these things as they were during the Obama years, because at the very least, Trump is the John Gotti of uh, American politicians in that he doesn't sugarcoat it and will give you the uh, will give you the uh, dirty, ugly underbelly of what really goes on behind the scenes, in addition to his own off personality. You know? yeah. <laughs> remember, remember, Trump is the symptom, not the cause of well, the majority of all the bullshit we've been doing. Well, no, uh, he, he, tr Trump would not be in the position he's in right now if the American public hadn't put him there. Yep. Plain and simple. You know, and, and you know, I, I think this whole thing about being able to vote is overrated. Because when everybody gets to vote, they're very easily persuaded by an idiot like Trump to vote for him. You know, the average public it doesn't sit around and know what's going on politically. Am I being uh, am I being a snob about this? But I just no, I was, I, you're right. I mean, I think he was elected because People were fed up, and, and they were like, we keep getting these bogus choices, you know, of another lame brain politician, and they thought, you know, at least he's something different. And I think a lot for a lot of people, that's what it is. Well, you know, you know he, something. He has you know something. The flaws in our system. The, the person, the person that ruined this for us, ruined our democracy for us, was Frank Capra, because he made a picture called "Mr. Smith Goes to Washington." And he gave America the, note, no, the, the notion that uh, uh, if the average man went to Washington, he would be the pinnacle of honesty and, and virtuosity. Not virtuosity, it's not the word I'm looking for. Virtuousness. Uh, and and uh, I'm sorry, it just isn't true. You know, I mean, what is a politician but a professional? And who do you need in that job? You need a professional in that job. You don't need a failed businessman running your country. And I think that the notion that we, hey, you want something different, you don't like business as usual is a good notion, but the answer is not Donald Trump. The answer are a lot of other people first before Donald Trump, and they'll never rise to the surface because they, they, the public isn't going to pay attention to him. Yes, uh, um, uh, Brian. What about, what about, though, instead of a failed businessman, a successful businessman? What about a teacher? What about a janitor, a custodian, uh, an HVAC technician, an automotive technician? Um, I kind of take issue with a, a professional politician because a professional politician to me is someone who will whisper sweet nothings in your ear while they finger your asshole while you're not paying attention. Are there, let me ask you this, though, Brian. Are there some honest virtuous uh, politicians. Yes, yes, there are. There okay. are exceptions. Who, who can Bernie you tell? Bernie Sanders is one. Yeah. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is now the other, as is uh, Tulsi. I don't, think, I don't think Bernie is, to tell you the truth. I think Bernie's a con artist like the rest of them. Yeah. Well, I've been following Bernie Sanders for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He is the man you see on TV. He has the same policies. He's had the same opinions. He's fought for the same causes for the whole 20 years I've been following. But there's something that just doesn't ring right with me with him. You know, there's just something, there's something evidence. that's off. You know, and by the way, everything Bernie stands for, I believe in. Okay? But there's just something about Bernie that I just, I don't find uh, Alex. real. Yeah. Yes. You like Pete Buttigieg. You're always promoting him, and you and the big thing you say is, "Oh, Trump can never affect him, or he would have trouble." I'm sorry, but Trump's uh, take on him already affected him in my eyes. He called him Alfred E. Newman, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I can't get that image out of my head now. Yeah, well, let's come up with one for, for Trump. I mean, uh, looking the fat pig that he does, we certainly can come up with some image for Trump. You know. And by the way, Buttigieg, Buttigieg does not look like, like Alfred E. Newman. I'm sorry. Um, what do you think of him, Brian? Because I'm asking you because 
He's one of your guys. He's also he's also around three weeks older than myself. Yeah, he's, we're uh, we're roughly the same age. He's thirty-seven. I'm mm -hmm. thirty-seven. Um, from what I understand, he's as bought out as Biden. Maybe not so much, but he is. He is beholden to uh, you know big money donors, big money liberal donors. He claims he's uh, not though. Donors. He claim he claims he's not taking big money. One of the. I will say one of the best, one of the one of the more brilliant things that's come out of that guy's mouth was his coining of the phrase "democratic capitalism," knowing mm. that the, a large swath of the American public, every time they hear the word socialism, even if it's used in the context of democratic socialism, which technically isn't socialism at all, just holding people who are a make who who are the Bezoses and the Zuckerbergses is uh, accountable more accountable than they already are. Uh, there, It's not socialism, but nevertheless, when they hear that word socialism, their innards freeze solid and they can't shit for a month. So when they hear <laughs> capitalism instead, that's their, that's their mental laxative. Yeah. So I, I will give Buttigieg uh, credit for having you coin that term. Yeah, Democratic but I don't, I don't think he's, he's in bed with big money. I, I think that he, uh, he started his whole campaign with, I think, an office with three people. And now they're up to about 90 people because he's gotten people following him. But uh, the reason I, and I'll, I'll say this, um, uh, uh, Bree, about Buttigieg, is that the reason I, I like him as a candidate, you know, when I talk about I like somebody as a candidate, uh, I, 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 it, I've gotten to the point where I don't care what they are values-wise personally. I care about right now whether they can beat this fucking fat fuck in the White House. And I think Buttigieg has, has a good shot if he gets the main spot running against him. And people are then saying, okay, we got to listen to him. We got to make the choice. Uh, right now, the guy who supposedly can just beat the shit out of him, according to the pollsters, and it's still too early to poll, is uh, Biden. Who I don't like. I don't think he will. He'll lose. I don't believe to the Trump. polls, Alex. What? Plus, Buttigieg would be the first millennial president we ever get. <clears throat> yeah. Never believe the polls. Well, never believe the polls. And, you know, they're not. The polls weren't wrong with Hillary. Okay? They weren't wrong with the last election. They said Hillary would win the vote. And she did. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. They weren't going around figuring out, well, Who's going to win based on electoral? Okay, yeah. and that's where the pollsters made their big mistake. Otherwise, the they were dead on. In they Pennsylvania. what? And the hubris of the Democratic establishment ignoring Wisconsin and Pennsylvania yeah. and Michigan. Yeah. 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 But the point is that she that won by happen. she won by three million votes. That's not a small majority. That's but she lost, she won by three million votes, but lost the election. And that what wasn't something, that wasn't something that the, uh, that the pollsters were counting on or even looking at. <laughs> they will be this time. You can bet your life on that. But here you've got, you've got, you've got Fox saying Biden would beat him, along with five other Democratic yep. candidates, including Buttigieg. He's number five. He's one point behind uh Trump, ahead of Trump. Uh, Biden is about 10 points ahead of Trump. All right? And this is in a Fox News poll. Mm. And then it is also in a Donald Trump internal poll. Comes out with the same numbers. Yeah. So yeah, he, just fi he just fired his pollsters. Cool. You know, he's looking for somebody who will make him look no. good. You know. Maybe. Yeah. The, uh, I think all the Democrats are going to gang up. They're all the, every story I see every day is they're trying to bring Biden down. They find every little thing. Well, that's not going to work out if he ultimately ends up being the nominee. Uh, I just think he's going to be extremely damaged goods. Now, I, I'm not a big fan of Joe Biden, but uh, he is a fellow Syracuse alum. Mm -hmm. So his likability goes up a little bit for me there. But I think that they're gonna they're aiming at him. I mean, the, I have Google News. The first story mm -hmm. was you know them they were going after Biden. Yeah. Well, uh, what was it? What was the thing they went after Biden on today? I'm trying to remember now. I, was, I heard it. Uh, he he was saying something. I know what he was saying. 
he was saying that he got along with two real racists years ago uh, uh, in, tr in, in trying to get things passed and that they could, he could work with them anyway in spite of the fact that they were racists. And, of course, the new guys on the block are saying, well, this is terrible. You should never have to do business with those people. The only thing is, and I'm going to defend Biden in this particular case, if any of them were in the Senate at the time, they would have done business with them, too, to get stuff done. But today, today you can be more principled because there are more people on your side. But in those days, you had to do business with even the bad guys in order to get something done. What's the saying, Alex? If you're when you, when you're up your ass and alligators, sometimes you, you forget that you have to uh, drain the swamp. While draining the swamp, you have to get dirty. So yeah, so. and some alligators may bite you on the way down. So you know. It's, yeah. Alex, I gotta take off. I gotta go to the office. You have to go to the office. Okay, well, uh, let me see here. I'm going to have to figure out how to get rid of you. Uh, and I'll tune in. Uh, I'll try to get back in when I'm at the office, okay? Okay, okay. okay. Uh, do that. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll just... And in answer to Bree's question regarding Al Gore's margin of defeat over George W. Bush, it was much, much smaller than uh, yeah. Hillary Clinton's uh, margin. We'll live... Well, we'll live... We'll, we'll, we'll leave... It was the only state. Yeah. He had won Florida, and he did win Florida, but they wouldn't let him count the vote. Gore would have been president. It was that one state was the difference. Uh, yeah. We're, we're going to leave Bree's spot open so that uh, you know, either that or I could move Al up there. That's possible. It. Huh? Yeah, I could move you up there, Al. Uh, I, I just have to realign things here, folks, for a moment. Please excuse me while I do so. Where? There's Al. Okay. And uh, let me see here. There's Al. And then I get rid of Al. Uh, I'll get rid of Al uh, here. We'll just make him disappear. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, here, let me do it. There we go. Okay. So we got four people. We're not getting as many people calling us as used to call us. And I'm beginning, it's beginning to bother me. Maybe I'll go down to one night a week. That's what I'll do. You know? Just do Wednesday. Huh? Just do Wednesday. It's my best do, do Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was actually, I was coming up with a new concept that maybe I'd do a morning show. Hmm. I'd go on at like 6 o'clock in the morning, which out on the West Coast would be 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm just going to bed. Yeah. You're trying yeah. to get somebody? What? What, do you want to have nobody on your show? That's right. You know, sit here <laughs> talking to myself, you know. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. But um, I, I might do it one one morning. Go on at like nine o'clock in the morning, and, and I, who knows? I I don't care, you know. So, boy, I am so tired these days. Let me have more coffee here. Mm. Mm. That's more coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so what we had today was uh, uh, this whole thing with Biden, and 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 Bree was right. I mean, the problem is. They're going to they're going to start infighting. They're all kind of beating up on Biden, which, I, you know, I can't feel sorry for Biden. I'm not a Biden fan. But does that serve the Democratic Party well for them to all be going after Biden? And I think the answer is no. No. You know, would you you agree, Al? I agree. I, I think we. I'd rather see them not go after each other so much and get this guy out of office, for God's sakes. Well, I think that should be the main, the main object here, is, is let's, let's, get, let's take care of, uh, let's get rid of Trump, okay? Yeah. It's time to get rid of Trump. And, and uh, uh, he's, it's doable. Now, the thing is, yesterday he held his big I'm running for president rally. Oh, boy. And, and what did he do? He, he brought out his greatest hits. You know, he didn't come up with anything new. It was like he was running back again four years ago. And he comes up and he goes, crooked Hillary, lock her up. He's doing all of that. And I'm going, Donald, that's four years. Ago. You know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter anymore. She, she does barely exist, you know. And I'm going, why, why are you? 
Huh? What did he say? It's sad what appeals to his his population that uh, that supports him. That's just unbelievable. Yeah. It's so brainwashed. Just like. Well, he is uh, going backwards. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah, but I mean, I think that he, I think that he's beatable. Okay, but he's beatable by the right person. And now the question is, who's the right person? And are the Democrats going to shoot themselves in the foot again? I think a house slipper could beat him. He's so bad. But, well, you, you'd think a house slipper could beat him, but we would have said that four years ago, wouldn't we? You know? No, we didn't expect the Democrats to run such a stupid campaign. Well, <laughs> but the, dude, don't they always run a stupid campaign? As long as they're beholden to the uh, to the uh, neoliberal class, yes, they will always the donors. As long as they're beholden to the donors. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, d- I mean. you got to remember this thing goes into the primaries, and then in primary season we come out with a with a candidate, and all of this is going to be played out on TV. Um, we just lost somebody, didn't we? Who did we lose? Who did we lose? Oh, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. 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 Oh, well, here comes Tommy Yamaguchi. What, what happened to Jeff? Let me see here. Tom, let me see if I can bring that you on actually. here. Is that, is that uh, Tom? Tom, are you coming on? Tom, are you coming on? Yeah, Tom Hi. Yamaguchi has joined. Okay, let me give him, um, I won't give him Jeff's slot, but let me give him another slot. Here comes Jeff again. So Jeff will suddenly appear uh, in video here any moment now. Yeah, that should happen. Okay, let me let me go here and put uh, put uh, let's see the panel six. Let me see here what's number five. That's where we'll put Tom Yamaguchi. Uh, uh, let me see here, Tom Yamaguchi. Okay, turn that on. Do a little uh, fade in there, and there's Tom. Hello, Tom. Hello. Yeah. Thought you might want another non-car owner on the panel tonight. Oh yeah, you're a, you're a bike rider. I'm a bike, uh, a yeah. bus rider, part rider, non-car owner. Uh, I think I've only had I've actually only had two cars in my life, and uh, both of them came dented, so I didn't have to worry about first dents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So but I haven't had a car since for. At least several decades. Several decades. Wow. Yeah. Well, I haven't had one for 15 years now. You know. Yeah. And I can't say that I'm uh, I'm 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 missing it particularly. Uh, but you know, and if I really needed a car, Shecky would lend me his car. I could go out to Queens, pick up his car, and use it if I had to. One thing. So you just said concern about forgetting how to drive. Um, I used to pride myself when I did learn to drive. I learned to drive from a standard transmission. And I just discovered I forgot how. I forgot how to drive a stick shift. I'm so bummed about that. You know, I think I could probably drive a stick shift today. But, I mean, you really don't have to. Where do you find a stick shift anymore, you know? Yeah. What happened was that housemate who had a car, he had a real serious dental emergency, and he asked me if I could drive his pickup truck to the, the dentist for him. And I was just having a horrible time trying to drive his truck. Well, I, think I, could, I, I think I could do it. I think I could do it. I think I, because I, the first car I ever drove was a stick shift. You know, sure. kids sure. today, in the old days, you know, if you took, if you, uh, if you, when I was growing up, if you took your driver's test in an automatic shift car, you got a license that said you could only drive automatic shift cars. Uh, yeah, they have that. yeah. CDL. Yeah. And, uh, the CDLs they have now. Yeah, but now, I mean, it, pretty much every car is automatic. I mean, I, I, he had a stick shift because he probably had an old truck, right? Yes. Yeah. You, you, you know, very rarely would have that sort of thing happen to you. Yes. But, but I was still bummed. Yeah. Yes, uh, 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 Al? Um, it seems that they, uh, for different reasons, insurance companies would prefer to see us with automatics. 
I think that they're discour- actively discouraged in manufacturing of the manual transmission. Well, the reason they don't, the reason they don't uh, uh, make manual transmissions in most cars, I think there may be some sports cars left that you can get a mm-hmm. manual transmission. Uh, True. You know, um, that you get a manual transmission. Uh, but um, for the most part, you can't get uh, anything but automatics. I mean, it, it, they're all automatics. I had a sports car that was an automatic, you know? Yeah. Uh, there was at least, like, one model of Corvette that but they just, you couldn't have anything but an automatic. Right, right. So, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, pretty much the way it is now i guess i mean i don't know i don't drive a car anymore how do i know uh wait a minute here comes brie from work let's see here there's brie and let me give him a spot here let me go up to number six uh and we put in brie where is he which again doesn't mean anything for those of you listening on audio only podcast yeah which is me 97 percent of the time yeah, but there's there's Bree for all of you who want want to see Bree. Okay, um, uh, he's at work now. How long does it take? It doesn't take you very long to get to work. Nope, I live right across the street. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Okay, that was quick and convenient. That's the best way, you know, commuting is actually one of the main reasons why people don't like their jobs or why they, uh, I think, get. Uh, depressed about their job or disillusioned or whatever, you know, the, the commuting time has a big factor. Yeah. And, you know, traffic and, and honking at other people and worrying about your insurance and how much gas well, it's Well, in Dubai, the problem... The pollution yeah. intake. In Dubai, the downside must be that in walking across the street, you have to walk through all that heat. You get used to it. And in the morning, it's not so bad. Yeah. Uh, Tom... Yeah, well, uh, Bree, uh, I, I just got on. I just told Alex that uh, I came on as another panelist that would, that doesn't own a car. And for much of my time here in Berkeley, my uh, I've been a bicycle commuter. In fact, right now the job I have, I ride my bicycle across town. It's a little bit uphill, but it's downhill coming home. I love my commute. Yeah, I have an e-bike. Cool. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I I hated pedaling uphill when I had a bike. I just hated it. I would walk my bike up the hill. I'm sorry. <laughs> what were you gonna What were you saying, Al? They just told you get an e bike. No, no, no more pedaling. <laughs> get a what bike? E bike. E bike. E bikes. What? What? Yeah. What's, what's an e bike? See this? I'm so out of it now. I'm. I'm <laughs> Got an electric, an electric bike. If I were at it's home, I'd show it to you. Electric bike. Yeah. Oh, I see. Get an electric bike. Okay. It's got a battery. It's got a motor. <laughs> yeah, and what happens when you run out of electricity? You walk it up the hill. <laughs> and keep pedaling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, I, you know, uh, what I want to say to Tom, because... He is drive, He's riding a bike. He's ecologically correct, and I want to thank him for his service. You know, You're welcome. because uh, I I don't know if 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 I had to have some form of transportation, if having a bike, uh, you you turn that sideways, will you please, Al? Yeah, I went into the. <laughs> he's going to sleep. I think I'm back. No, yeah, I went to sleep. My, my phone went to sleep. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, thank you very much. You know how much I hate that? I hate that more than I hate Trump, okay? I hate, I hate portrait, uh, I hate portrait mode. because And everybody shoots in portrait mode today. I'm thinking of doing the whole show in portrait mode, you know? It's, it's easier to hold the camera like that. Unfortunately, it's easier to hold your phone vertical than it is horizontal well then they should do more to make it more user friendly to hold it this way as i said before alex a while ago um using android i have an app that forces the phone to go into uh, a specific orientation be it landscape or portrait or reverse portrait or reverse landscape still 
What do you mean it, it forces it? it? It it's it's an app that overrides the phone and says to the phone, okay, you are going to be in landscape mode, motherfucker. No, regardless. <laughs> Now, periodically, the phone wants to be a little bitch, and uh, over, like for like two milliseconds, it'll override the application, but it won't last long because the application will get out its dildo and says, okay, you want to play games? We're going <laughs> to shove this up your ass, so you're going to be in... I, 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 I love the way, I love the way Brian couches. I'm glad I have my own uh, office space here. Huh? I'm glad I don't have a shared office space. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if this happened in Malaysia, and I in, and not on my own you know what, Alex? Though, so if if more tech commercials were as honest and as uh, transparent as my mouth, people would uh, not be as I don't think people would be as apprehensive of new technological developments, especially if they're being developed by app developers who are hey, honest. By the way, let, let me bring up something here, okay? Uh, tonight they had a thing on the uh, on the news. They had two things on the news. One that was really wrong. They said, and now our lead story is that this baseball player, what's his name, the Red Sox, Poppy. Uh, uh, mistaken identity, Dan Ortiz. Uh, Ortiz. That it was mistaken identity. The big news, mistaken identity. That was news oh. the day it happened. The day it happened, the guy who shot him said, I shot the wrong guy, and that was on the news. And they're making a big deal today that this was the big news. They meant to shoot somebody else. That's, of course, their excuse. I didn't mean to shoot him. <laughs> you know. So that's God. I to shoot somebody else. You know. Well, I'm yeah. sorry. I can't, I can't uh, couch my, uh, my opinion in your lousy fucking, you know, <laughs> misstep. Wow. Wow. <laughs> No, you still got shot. But the other story that they had was that hospitals are having problems now with when there are emergencies going on at the hospital, the phone's ringing and they're robocalls. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And my question is, when are we going to... Now, I got a robocall the other day, and the robocall said... Uh, we're calling from the Social Security Administration. Oh, yeah. And we need to change your card or something like that. Please give us the information legal, we need. There's legal activity on your card and your, your social security number is being shut down until you call us. Yeah. yeah. Now, my question is, where's the fucking government? Isn't that illegal to represent yourself yeah. as a government agency when you're not? Of course. Yeah. Well, well, when why you aren't they? Fox is guarding the hen house, like Sandy Dick Hair Pie, the toilet skin twat, a.k.a. Agit Pie. Um, and you know, Betsy Devoid of the, uh, I mean Betsy DeVos of the Education Department. Uh, you got all these crooks. What do you expect to have happen? You are not going to get results. If you get any results, they are going to be against the common working man's favor. So, yeah, there's the answer to your question. Way to there. clean the swamp. You know, yeah, I got to tell you, the other thing on the news today, this was the fun one, uh, was Hope Hicks testified before a Senate committee. Was it a Senate committee? I think it was a Senate committee. What was she wearing? Uh, well, that, uh, and, and my wife says to me, boy, is she a cunt. And I'd say, I looked at her and I said, I'd fuck her. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing worse for me than a sexy Republican. You know, it's the worst thing of all, all possible because I'm putty in their hands. Uh, Albert and I went to uh, the Republican National Convention when it was here in New York, and I can't remember who they were nominating or whatever, but we went. We had uh, tickets to go or pa press passes to go, and we went to it at Madison Square Garden, and the two of us just kept saying to each other, why are these Republican women so fucking sexy? Mm -hmm. They were all the they were all like Hope Hicks, and I'm going Jesus. You know, I sure would have been a bad Jew in World War II because I would have fallen in love with Nazi women. You know, but I looked at Hope Hicks today and I went, "That's a piece of ass." I mean, am I wrong? Is are you gonna me too? Me now out there? Go ahead. She's also a yep. cunt, but she's a piece of ass, too. Yes, Brian? 
Uh, you made the, you raised the question. It might have been rhetorical, but I'm going to answer it anyway. Regarding why uh, there's so many hot Republican women, mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's because they see the Republican Party as their false prophet, or their false savior, in guarding them from, you know, uh, thirsty, typically um, white men who want to, you know, get into their panties, yourself included, and uh, so, you know. Maybe they're looking at this. Uh, the, 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 maybe they're looking at the uh, conservative ideology as a uh, as like a security blanket, which is the wrong approach. But am I wrong? Is Hope Hicks sex sexy? Well, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen. I, I may have seen her on the news briefly, but I don't. I don't know. I heard the name, but I've not seen her. I've not seen. Her you're picture. you're gay, and by the way, with that haircut, you're going to get lots of dates. Anyway, uh, and and Tom is gay. So I can't ask him if, if Hope Hicks is sexy, although... That's true. I'm not qualified to judge that. <laughs> You're not qualified I, to judge I, it. Right. I yeah. do not have the qualifications. How about you, Al? Uh, is, is Hope Hicks sexy? She's hot. He's hot. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And Jeff? I never saw her. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, oh okay. I have to take you at your word. Yeah. Oh, oh there we go. There there we go. Uh, uh, Here we go. Yes, he's hot. Yeah, talk, say something, say something, Bree, so your camera will turn yeah. on. Uh, uh, so these are just some of the shots of Hope Hicks. Yeah. And, uh, I know AOC. Look did at that. that. Look at there that. Was one, uh, there was one. <laughs> there was one news outlet. Yep. That, she's oh, yeah, good. Here was the shot that she complained about. This. <laughs> Look at that one. Yeah, yeah. I can touch her pussy. Anyway, what? He probably is right there. Oh, look at look at that! Has. Look at that! I mean, are we are we gonna are, uh, you know? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. What's wrong with this picture? Uh, there she was. She was good. That was her going into the uh, hearing today. As a matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So, uh, well, wait, wait a minute. I got. I got. Uh, 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 Say something, Bree, so we can see the pictures yeah. again. Okay, so these are just sun up pictures. That's yeah. her going into the hearing. Yeah. Yeah. I know a few female uh, former high school graduates who are uh, right of center and are just as attractive, if not more so, than her. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, say something again, Bree, so we can see your pictures. Yeah. That, that's her right there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean so that's. She was, oh, here she is shaking Trump's hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Probably holding a, should hold a bottle of sterilizer in the other hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Smart. In the White House, they now have Purell dispensers. Um, yeah, look at her. You can see her down there, folks, in the bottom of your screen. Yeah. She there. She is patriotic with the American flag in the background. Yeah. I mean, she she's you know she's hot. I'm here sorry. She looking, here she is looking determined. By the oh way, for God, those what, people who are only listening to this as a as a, as an audio program, yeah, talk about a juxtapositioning. You're, you're yeah. not. You, uh, <laughs> just use your imaginations, okay? All right, enough with the pictures, Bree. Okay, <laughs> that's enough. That's enough. I, 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 I'm doing a show here and I can't jerk off. Okay, so you know it's not <laughs> wouldn't be right. So. We're going to cool off. Yeah. It serves as a substitute for Viagra, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, um, so we had the Hope Hicks thing today, and we had the uh, okay, the Biden thing today. What? What, wait, wait, what do you... Oh, look, do it. Look, unless, Brie, unless you come up with nude pictures of her now... <laughs> oh, well, that... AOC any day. Oh, I, AOC is a very attractive woman. Very attractive woman, uh, uh, who tries to, in a way, kind of dress her looks down by wearing the glasses and her hair back in a bun, but she's there, there she is, with, uh, you know, she's a, a very attractive woman, you know. What do you guys yeah, think so of, you know, AOC, everybody likes to put AOC down. And, and, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. I, <laughs> I think she, huh? Who said, said not me? As you, everybody likes to put it. No, I'm, I'm not one of them. I have my hats off to her. Yeah. I think yeah. she's pretty terrific, actually. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah. She came from the freak. She came. She was a plebiscite for the, for the longest time. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. She's uh, she's pretty. Have damn you seen Mini AOC? Mini AOC? Wait a minute. Okay. Mini AOC. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Still Mini Girl, a little girl yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, little routines on Fox News. Oh God. Yeah. She she says uh, she's a socialist because she uses social media. Mm. Oh okay. Lovely. All right. So she's uh, appealing to the uh, closeted pedophile demographic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Fox News. No, the yeah. con job servatives who jerk off the pictures of Jean Benet Ramsey back in the day. Right, right. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I... <laughs> Al, have you have we ever properly met each other? This this is how I talk when I'm on this program. <laughs> 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 this is my catharsis. Yeah, <laughs> I've enjoyed it. <laughs> you, Brian, yeah, you either do or you proud. don't like me. Either you hate, either you hate, you loathe me, or you love me. There's no middle ground. All right. It looks like you look like Kid Craddock. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my question is, I mean, uh, you know, we, we 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 get to the the big question, which is, uh, who is the uh, you know who who is who which which of the Democrats uh, to begin with? What Democrats are going to get out of the race fast? You know. Who's that? Well, we've already seen a few. Richard Ojeda was one of them. Yeah. Are we going to lose? Are we going to lose a whole bunch of people after the debates? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, it's not the debates since Super Tuesday. Al Gore is coming back. Yeah. <laughs> you really believe Surprise. that? Yeah. No. He'll be at the convention. He'll be at the convention. Right. Okay. Wow. He did, uh, he did, he's been showing up in the news. He, he, uh, he branded Trump a would-be autocrat in a Harvard speech last week. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll mm -hmm. use the Jewish term, then Al Gore will be the Democratic establishment's flesh golem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tom. <laughs> See, I got Alex going on that one. He's like that. Get that one. <laughs> what, Tom? <laughs> yeah, something, something I didn't get a chance to mention last night was... You know, I think it's Nebraska is actually going to do their primary by ranked choice voting. Mm -hmm. Good. And I've all, I wish it, it, yeah. it was California because there are a number of candidates that I would love to vote for through ranked choice. I would really do it. I have a number of candidates I would really think I would love to see come to the top, you know. And I don't know how the other people feel, but, you know, uh, I mean, I think there's a whole bunch of candidates I think are very well qualified and can beat Trump. No, I'm all for ranked choice. Voting. Okay, so who, so who are they in your mind, Tom? Well, personally, you know, if you're asking for my personal preferences... Uh, one thing I, no, I, let's I, I let's not, let's not go per, let's not go exactly with personal preferences. Who do you think well, can beat him? Like, give you right now. Yeah. It's my personal preferences. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I mean, I don't know who's going to make the cut. You know, I mean, uh, right now I, I'm supporting Jay Inslee, as I mentioned last night. And that is because I'm really ex happy that there's one candidate is putting climate change front and center in his campaign. Now, whether he's going to make it or not to the, to the you know, to Super Tuesday when I or the March primaries, when I get to vote, I don't know. Well, let me let me well, ask you this. Let me everything I can to get him there. Let me ask you this, okay? Do you think the American public, in general, gives a shit about climate change? Now, I don't. I, I care about climate change. You care about climate change. Everybody here probably would agree that climate change is maybe the most important single issue that we have going. But do you think the American public gives a shit about climate change, or do you think they give a shit about... More, about or, yes, the polls are showing more yeah. and more, especially with these extreme weather events, more and more people are recognizing, hey, something's going on here. You know, something really bad's going on. We better do I something. Don't, I don't think... Is, does anybody agree with me that the American public is, is not climate change... Uh, uh, 
adept, as it were. Yes, uh, um, uh, Bree. Well, I've, I've written papers on this, and you're right uh, to a large extent. And one of the reasons why is it's difficult to imagine it. It's kind of like um, saying the deficit is a trillion dollars, and people have a hard time comprehending that idea of a trillion, you know. And, and so I think you're right. I, people are, are concerned about it, but they don't feel there's anything they can do about it or that anything they would do would have any impact. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they're concerned about it, and they'll click the like button on Facebook. But, you know, whether they're going to do anything about it or not is another matter. Well, it, it's, um, also, it's also a scientific concept, and I don't know that people get scientific concepts quite as well. You know, I... I I just don't, you know, Tom, uh, in all deference to you, because I agree with you. I think it's the number one issue. I think it's the thing we got to do right now, because if we don't do it within the next 10 years, uh, our goose is cooked, okay? Uh, uh, and, but, but, uh, but, so you and I agree on that, but how do we get the American public to be very concerned about it? You know, I think they're more concerned, believe it or not, about uh, uh, immigration, and and the the uh, barbarians at the gate down by the border than they are about uh, about the uh, climate change. Yes, Tom. Well, just to answer your question, uh, Alex. Uh, one of the brilliant things about Inslee is he's he's bringing all these together and saying that they're not separate issues. I mean, when you talk about the refugee situation, I mean, many of these people are climate refugees. Yep. You know, when we talk about income equality, you know, defense, you know, all these things come back down to what's happening with, you know, uh, with, 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 with growing. Yeah, know, but I agree. I, I agree with you, Tom. I don't disagree with so, you. Well, but, our job then is to bring that message to the average person and we can do it. We can bring that message to the average person. I mean, I may seem like a Pollyanna to you, but the way I look at it is, mm -hmm. if I don't, if I don't believe that, I might as well give up and croak right now. Well, right? Uh, I might as well give up and croak. Well, how many? You know, uh, how many here think with a raise of hands? How many here think climate change is is the number one concern we should have? Because I would agree with that. Well, I, I'll raise my hand on that. Yeah, not the, yeah. So, not the first, Jeff, the do you, Jeff, how do you feel about it? You didn't raise your hand. Well, I'm kind of like trying to be close, but not. I'm not. I'm not as insured as much as you guys are. Yeah. You know, like but, I say, Jeff, if it's not the number one issue, it should be top three or top five. Yes. Yes, I would go on that. You know something, by the way, can I just mention something quickly to Brian? Uh, Brian, I have a few words about your hair that suddenly hit me. Uh, when I see you on the small screen as opposed to the large screen, it's just about two steps away from Trump. <laughs> You're the second person to tell me. Yeah. Who, who, is, who is the first person to tell you that and is he still alive? <laughs> yes, of course. He's, one of my, he's, a, he's a close friend of mine, and, uh, and yeah, uh, we're, we're both gay, so he told me this uh, about two months ago. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, a, yeah, but it, the only difference is, yours is not a comb over. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, otherwise, it. It, yeah, yes, Tom. I've got an alternative opinion. I see a young Captain Kangaroo. Uh, young, <laughs> yes. Very good. Yes. Very good. Yes. <laughs> Say Good something, time. Brian, so we can go to your camera. Yeah, I guess if that's how you see it. So. Yeah, that is. yeah. If you put a mustache on him, he's Bob Keeshan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> face paint on him, he's Clarabelle the Clown. Now you, you know part of this. Part of the reason is, 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 is that uh, you're, you know, that you are look like these people, is because you've lost weight. And so your yeah. face is thinned out. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so the only thing that differentiates you from Trump is he's a fat fuck. 
you know. I kind of used to be one. And you kind of no, used but... to be one, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you finding that since you lost weight and uh, you uh, colored your hair uh, that you're getting more male dates, are you getting more attractive to the... I'm uh, getting more, uh, maybe a, a, a marginally more uh, hits on uh, apps, but as far as actively going out in pursuit, I'm really not. The first, I'm going to admit that the, the hair thing was a bit of a vanity thing, um, first and foremost, but as far as the weight loss, first and foremost, and this is important, it was so that uh, when I go for my DOT physical, mm -hmm. or uh, a physical, mm -hmm. that uh, I wouldn't have to worry about uh, the possibility of being hooked up to a CPAP machine every time I want to go to sleep. Yeah. Which, yeah. Was, I was on the precipice of, of having that. Yeah. Um, well, you, you're looking good. How much weight have you lost? About 50 pounds. <clears throat> wow. Because I lost 60, and now I've, I'm actually... December, I weighed 250. It's, uh, uh, three days ago, I weighed 201. My weight right now is 50 pounds less than when I started. I gained a few pounds because, you know, I, I go up, I go down. All right? I was down to almost 190, but I, I gained a few back. Well, I, I, I went from I went from I went from uh, 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 I went from uh, uh, two forty five uh, down to what uh, the other day I was one ninety three, but most of the time I'm one ninety, uh, and I even went as low as one eighty, but I felt that that was just too much, so I I started eating a little bit. I was getting worried. That somehow I had some kind of I'd illness. I'd like to go down to 185, but uh, it's not happening. So yeah, now. but stand up. Just stand up. Uh, stand up so we can see what you look like here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not a good presentation. It's yeah. kind of camera. Look at that. Look at that. He's felt, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Huh? Huh? Yeah. What, what, what? Tom, you're gay. Is he hot? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's hot. <laughs> he's ready to be a spokesperson and for Subway. <laughs> Minus the child predilection. <laughs> Jared Vogel. Don't Vogel that, don't Vogel that kid, asshole. <laughs> don't Vogel that little girl. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. You know, I'm so glad oh, you're on tonight, Brian. Because we've missed you, you know. Uh, we've mi missed your take on things and, and so on. Um, well, I, I didn't ask you, though, do you have a person that you're, a Democrat, that you're backing in all of this? Me? Yeah. Uh, Support. Well, I have, I have like, a, a, like a ranked choice thing, as uh, Tom was saying. Um, Bernie and Tulsi. Tulsi. Tulsi That's, Gabbard. She's from Hawaii, right? Correct. And she's hot as hell. Well, she's this, again. She's the same age as uh, I am. As, as she's thirty-seven as well. She may be yeah. thirty-eight. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, uh, she's the only other Democratic candidate other than Mr. Sanders, who's uh, been overly critical of uh, our um, imperialist ambitions overseas. And mm -hmm. this coming from a woman who has served in a great capacity. Yeah. 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 So, so she knows what she's talking. About. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Mayor Pete was uh, was very much yes. in the uh, in, in the in the service as well, and seems to have a pretty good grasp on what we need to do in that area. You know, so uh, I just think we need to go looking at the younger people. I really do. I think that uh, uh, if if you want a fresh approach, I think you might get a fresh approach with a younger person. Well, I've been on the record, Alex, as saying a while ago. Mm -hmm. I didn't say it on this program. I said it on Facebook, though, and some people agreed with me that if Trump, especially if Trump were to unfortunately secure a second term, he may oh. very well likely be our last boomer president. Our last boomer president? Yes. Oh. Is he a boomer? I guess he is. He's a baby boomer. Yes, he is, because he was born in 47. 47. Wow. Barack Obama was a younger baby boomer, but nevertheless, if Trump gets four more years, Trump that'll be in 2024. I think he will get four more years. Anyway, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get into that next time you call, Bree, because we got to go. I want to thank our panel. 
Al, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Call again, will you? We love seeing you again. Jeff, terrific. Uh, Tom, always a pleasure. Charlie, love seeing you. And Bree, uh, you know, he's in Dubai and he's going to be in Malaysia soon. Everybody, big wave goodbye, okay? And I shall wave back to you, okay? While at the same time having to hit a button here. Thank you. Uh, uh, all of a sudden, my automatic button pushing thing doesn't work, so uh, I have to, uh, uh, I, I can't do it like I normally do it. Anyway, look, um, that's it for us for tonight. Uh, coming up next, we got a guy by the name of, uh, of, uh, of Jack Bishop who does the intersection. And uh, then tomorrow night, 9.30, Damien Chaplin will be here with The Exchange. And then we will be back right after that with him, uh, with that show with him, right after him pfft, at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, we'll see you then. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, how many times do I say in the meantime? It's because I'm trying to do all these things and talk at the same time. If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>